Welcome to the Long Range Pursuit Podcast, presented by Gunworks, where we learn about and share long-range shooting techniques, science, and gear. Well, we're here at Gunworks HQ, and we've got a great guest today, Greg McHale from McHale's Wild Yukon, and helping me interrogate him is my trusty co-partner, Neil Emery. And we're, we're going to talk about that giveaway that you're leading this year it's a doll sheep hunt in the yukon right yeah well actually it's a it's a doll sheep hunt but it's an nwt um so with can all outfitters and the really cool thing about that is well first off thanks for having me guys so sure, you're yeah. welcome it's been uh it's been a blast i came down been able to uh get out shooting with you guys and yeah i've got one day of it under my belt and it's been just so much fun i really appreciate being here but um, yeah, that whole sheep hunt giveaway thing is, uh, it's a pretty big deal. It's for whoever wins this thing. Um, I don't know. It's, it's one of the, it's the lottery. Yes. And yeah. for some people, it'll be like winning, you know, a million dollars in the lottery. Like it's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. All of the partners that are involved and yeah, we're going to be in uh Canal outfitters and helicopter fly in, which is unique. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, in the Yukon, we don't have the ability to use helicopters and I've been in Northwest territories with Canal before and, um, you know, I've flown in with the helicopter and it's just such a unique experience. Um, not that it makes it any easier in a lot of ways, uh, but it's a, it's an amazing experience and that in itself certainly separates this hunt from, you know, from a lot. So I'm pretty excited about just you know, being involved and, you know, having the great partners that are involved in it. And somebody is going to be one lucky, uh, one lucky fellow or a woman. They sure are. Oh my gosh. I saw the video of the one you did up there. Uh, however many years ago that was. Yeah. A couple of years ago now. Yeah. That helicopter footage was unreal. Just the helicopter ride over that terrain would be something. Yeah. And I flew in there with, um, with the 185 and landed at base camp. They have a lake there and landed at base camp. Um, and then got to go from that to jumping in the in the helicopter and flying in. It's just, it's a different perspective. There's just so, you can just see so much more and it's just, it's different. And not being the pilot was, gave me an opportunity to really look around and just take it all in, which was pretty special for me. Um, the Mackenzie Mountains are just, they're, they are a unique and, and just an amazing place to hunt and to be in, in like, you want to talk about remote? It's as remote as it gets in North America, and uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a great place, great outfit. Uh, Glenda and Glenn, who who run the outfit, are just amazing people. Um, number one, and then they have an, a fantastic outfit, and they're managing it uh, as as well as it could possibly be managed, in my opinion. That's awesome. So, what will the logistics be like? Where are they going to meet you? So yeah, we haven't quite narrowed that down. Well, we'll probably meet in camp because um, they're going to have to get there and depending where where they come from or what's the best route in, whether we go in through NWT or through Whitehorse. If they come in through Whitehorse, then um, then I'll meet them at the airport. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll kind of, it might depend on, you know, where they're, whoever wins it. Right. If they're coming from the far east, it might be easier to come in through Northwest Territories. Mm -hmm. But if they're coming from the West Coast, um, you know, probably straight up to Whitehorse, and then then we'll figure out how to get them in from there. All right. So day one, are they going to stay right there at Canal Camp, or are you going to do get right in immediately and go? Well, I mean, it'll depend. Like obviously, like when it comes to these kind of hunts, you never know what the weather's gonna gonna bring. But um, typically, if you you know you get in, and if you can get out, you get into the mountains to give yourself as much time, and because. Um, Often, you know, you get, can get socked in in the mountains. And if you get into base camp and you didn't take that weather window to get out into the mountains, you know, you could be sitting there for days Yeah, and that's days of, uh, chewing up, you know, quality hunting time. Right. How so, long did your last hunt last there? Uh, it took, um, I was there for four days. So, uh, relatively quick then. Yeah. Relatively quick. We covered a lot of country and, yeah. uh, it was, you know, that's the great thing about certainly that time of year. Uh, is that there's so much daylight and you can hunt like 20 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So if you have the, you know, the tenacity to keep going, 
um, you can put in a lot of miles and you can cover a lot of country because just the days, the daylight just allows you to do so. So yeah, it's, um, four days is, yeah, it is fairly quick, but we've got 10 days. Uh, I believe it's 10 days or so. Right. So, so will you be going with camp on your back or is there going to be, yes, you will. Yeah. It's going to be total backpack hunting. So yeah, obviously get flown in, but then it's uh boots on the ground and you know, just carry what you carry, what you carry. And is it going to be mosquito or no see season during that? Yeah, I, it's it's a mosquito type situation okay. in, in the Yukon uh, for the most part. Um, but but the, even up high? No, nah, not up high. Like usually, the, it's you know, it's like here in the mountains, and the wind is blowing. It's it's pretty good. Good. So your fitness reputation, is, you know, is a big deal, and we got a, just had a guy in last week at our uh, shooting school who won your moose hunt. So he'll be hunting. Well. Yeah, he'll be hunting moose with you this fall. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, gosh, he was scared straight about getting in shape. You know, he says he's training like three times a day. <laughs> uh, so probably great. Nothing like a goal, right, to train towards. Yeah, well, I mean, he won that hunt. And again, that there, like that's another bucket list hunt for so many people, a moose hunt in, in the Yukon. Yes. So, I mean, I think we're super fortunate. He seems like a really nice guy and is taking it, like you said, taking it very serious. He, he has an opportunity that, you know, he'll never meet another person probably that will have an opportunity like that. And he's literally taking, you know, he's maximizing, he's putting all of the things in his favor. Now, do you need to be, a, you know, in amazing fitness shape to hunt moose? Not necessarily, but he's putting everything, you know, in in his basket that he can, uh, you know, he take advantage of it. And that's, that's what you'd love to see. And so what advice do you have for the eventual winner of this giveaway in terms of fitness for this particular hunt? Yeah, well, this one's unique because there's not a lot of time here. By the time we get, we're going to draw it at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, by first of June, we'll know. And we're hunting six weeks later. Yes. So like, it's one of those things. Do you... Do you have the ability to really get fit prior to this? Um, it's going to be challenging if, yeah. if the winner is not in shape. Right. But then it's just going to be, what is their mental attitude like? Mm -hmm. what, is their, what is their attitude like? And if they have a good attitude and they want, are not willing to quit and they just want to keep going, we'll be successful. Right. As long as they're willing to keep going and not quit, We'll just, we'll do whatever we can do to make it successful. And even at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if they say we didn't find a sheep, mm -hmm. um, anyone that goes into these mountains and goes in looking and having this kind of experience and receiving everything that, you know, that you get that goes along with this, um, if you're there for the experience and you're there for the right reason, uh, and which most people don't think they're going to win it anyways. Right. So just having that experience for so many people or um, is, is life-changing. And it's pretty difficult, I think, for somebody to walk away and go and be upset if, um, you know, if they didn't, right. you know, if they didn't have the opportunity at something. Obviously, you know, we go out and hunt and we, we want to get something. But if they're fit and they can move, then we will, I will do... I'll do the best job I can do. Um, I knock on wood. It's uh, there hasn't been many times that that I've been unsuccessful in the in the sheep hunting world. Um, having said that, it happens, mm -hmm. and it's hunting, right? Yeah, but what an adventure! It's gonna be it's awesome. gonna be a memory of a lifetime. Now it's gonna be filmed as well. How does that kind of affect you as a hunter when you have got a camera crew with you? Well, I think that, uh, you know, for me now it's seven years in, right. It's, it's, I don't even, you know, I don't even look at the cameras anymore really or like, right. but cause the camera guys are hunting with me, they're hunting me, I'm hunting, hunting the sheep and we're all just driving in the same direction together. But you know, it'll be unique for somebody who's never done that. Um, whoever wins, wins these hunts and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, how they handle, but normally once you get into hunting and you get focused on hunting and I'll try to, you know, I'll make it as relaxed as, as mm -hmm. possible for, for these guys or gals. And, um, it'll be, uh, once you get into the hunt, you've, you know, you kind of forget the cameras there often. Right. And it's just, let's, uh, you know, let's 
keep hard charging in the direction we need to go. Now, post-COVID, the animals got a bit of a break, right? Because there were fewer hunters for a couple of years. Do you, do you feel like that has any impact? That was something Neil and I were talking about earlier. Yeah, I don't. Um, certainly there was, you know, less pressure due to non-resident hunting, but the resident hunting went up. Oh, did it? And so it increased. So, you know, the areas uh, closer to the heavily populated um, cities, well, Whitehorse, the uh, Southern Lakes regions, um, I believe that they it saw more pressure, um, not necessarily success, but more pressure. Uh, but ultimately, those la those two years was a unique um, weather system that went through the Yukon too, and we got a significant snowfall like we've never seen in 60, 70 years. Oh, really? So that snowfall did not help the sheep population. So as much as um, um, I've I've noticed some of the you know the older rams ne didn't necessarily make it in the southern southern lakes region um but i mean that's cyclical that's just the way that's yeah. the way nature is mm -hmm. right so that covid break from non-resident hunters it probably it may have balanced itself out a little bit too yeah well in addition to this incredible adventure there's an incredible prize package yeah. right i mean there's a lot of gear here I don't know what the whole thing's valued at, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's. Well, I know we're in, in the ballpark of somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand for this whole for this yeah, whole prize well, package alone is just like a once in a lifetime opportunity, amen. let alone the hunt. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking at a ten plus thousand dollar rifle mm -hmm. from you yes. guys, right? Like, well, that's you know, it, it sits at the top of the pile. Let's get serious here. It's anyone that can put a gunworks rifle not just in their hand. You know, and let alone to walk away with it is, um, yeah, that's a, that's something because, and I know it's special because I have one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, then you look at Kuyu and obviously you're going to be completely outfitted in clothing, Zamberlin supplying boots, um, a couple pairs of boots. Um, you know, we got really right stuff with tripods and we got Hogue with, their new line of hunting knives. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's an amazing group of partners that have come together to really put together something special for, for one person. Um, so it's, it's great to be part of. And I really like, I, I'm not a huge fan of guiding. Right. Um, but when you do something like this and somebody that would never have an opportunity likely is going to win this, and watching them, and I've been part of, you know, we gave away a, a stone sheep hunt there about four years ago. And the fellow that won that would have never been able to afford a stone sheep hunt. Right. And the, you know, just being part of his experience was so rewarding for me. And um, that's what I'm, you know, likely is, I hope is what this is going to be like as well. Um, just being able, for me to be able to watch somebody that um, is probably never going to get another opportunity to be in a place like this in, um, and you know, being part of that is going to be good. Well, yeah. so let's go down the gear package. Obviously Kuyu's put together a really generous package. I mean, who wouldn't want to be fully outfitted in Kuyu? Um, what do you like about Kuyu? What isn't to like about Kuyu, um, is, is, is really the, you know, the quality and if, if you just look at at the brand and you kind of look at the brand's history, like it's just a cool story altogether. It sure is. Right? Um, like Jason's story was a, was, is a really, it, it was a really neat story how he, you know, moved on from Sitka and moved to building his own, the own brand. And um, it's, a, it's a really neat story. He was a great, great person, great leader. Um, I, you know, I really got along with him well and he, you know, he was, he was a, he was a figure, right? Yes. He was a personality and he built the, he built the brand and now it's carried on. The brand was built with, from just quality. Um, you know, I great friends with Brendan Burns, who's still there. And, um, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable sheep hunters in, on the planet. It really? Um, totally. Yeah. Like he knows more about Yukon sheep some days than I do. Yeah. Like we, like I'm just, he, we're having conversations on the phone. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> like, I, like 
I've been here for 25 years. How do you know that? And um, so he's a, you know, he's a, a really unique, uh, unique guy and a, a great friend. And the the brand is just quality. Now you're, you know, because of the way you hunt, obviously you really prioritize weight, right? So how do you balance that weight and warmth? Like how do you how do you kind of pack your bag? Yeah, I would. Um, I don't take anything that I don't need. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately things have to, if, if they can, if I can, they have to perform more than one purpose. Right. Um, I do tend to carry, um, a little bit more clothing than maybe, um, maybe I should some days, like certainly that down is such a key factor. Um, cause I tend to need to keep moving in order to keep warm. Well, you kind of saw it out there in the range today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you know, standing around uh, on the top of a mountain when the wind's blowing is, uh, I, I just need to either keep moving or I need to be warm. Right. And I can, uh, I don't mind carrying a little bit, a little bit more weight that way. Uh, very strategic about, you know, about food and I make a lot of my own food. Um, so, you know, calories in, I know what I, I kind of know what I need. Uh, but I don't carry any fluff. Like there's one pair of extra pair of socks and, uh, and that's it basically. So what kind of weather fluctuations could you experience? Yeah. That like in sheep season, you know, call it August, um, you can get like 25 degrees like Celsius. Um, it's at about 70, 70, high 70s. Yeah. Right? High seventies. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the next, next day it can be snowing. Right. Right. So you have to have, uh, Rip you have to have it all. Gamut. Yeah. You take yeah. rain gear as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And cause the rain gear is just so perfect for breaking wind sure. too. Right. right. Um, so even if it's not necessarily cold out. Yeah. 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 And a pack comes with this. So is that the pack that you carry or do you don't know yet? Yeah. Well, it'd be really dependent on the size of the person who wins it. Yes. Like if a woman wins it, we'll probably put her in a 6,000, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if a guy and he's in good shape and he can, you know, put him in a 7,800 and right. so that's what I carry. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's, it's going to, it's going to vary, but whatever we'll specify, it'll be, it'll be dictated by whoever wins. So you'll be putting in some miles. So your, your feet are going to need some protection and Zamberlin is offering up a couple pairs of boots. Yeah. Um, what do you like about Zamberlin boots? Well, I, it's been, that's, it's been an interesting journey with the boot situation. Um, I, I've tried out almost, almost all, like a lot of different brands. Right. And I couldn't settle on a boot that I felt that I could put out to, that I could put my name behind, that I could say like, this is a brand that I recommend until I, uh, until I found Zamberlin and they're, for mountain hunting, they're, they're 2920. Uh, I think it's a mountain trek. It's, uh, it's the boot that I think does it all. And, you know, there's lots of boots out that are super technical, um, but cold. And this boot, I just found that I think that anybody could put it on their feet and be happy with it. Um, I've got great feet, luckily. Um, so I don't, uh, I don't deal with, you know, with blisters and stuff like that for the most part, but I have a bit of a system that really works well. And though, but those boots, I feel that they really function. They're, you know, they're tough. They've got great feel. It's just such a, it's the best mountain, mountain hunting boot I've ever found. And, and as we all know, it's not easy to find a great boot necessarily. So the winner gets this prize package and inside of it is the fresh brand new pair of boots. Well, they'll have, Let's have some advice there. They'll get shipped out immediately. Yes. Well, like as soon as that person, but I, I can throw those boots on. Like I literally in sheep season, I'm not afraid at all to throw those boots on and go out and, uh, and start the hunt. So you don't feel like they need a lot of breaking in? No. Nope. Well, that's great. Do you, uh, do you stay away from insulated and just keep moving or do you like some level of insulation in your? No, like those 2920s, they're, they're, they're a little beefier boot, but I think that most people, you know, when you get that and you, you know, you put something on the ground and you throw a hundred pounds in your back, um, you kind of want something that's got some, some substance to it. Um, I've, I've tried, you know, light boots that don't, 
you know, don't have that. Um, I've, I've tried them all. And I think that those ones just really, uh, really work. Okay. So, so you're going to have to pack all this gear in a helicopter. You're also probably going to take in another plane to land at the camp. It's going to be another flight from somewhere else, maybe multiple flights. So you okay. got to pack up all your gear. Um, how do you protect your rifle? Well, in the the airplane is comes in super handy. You know, Air Armor Tech is also one of the uh, one of the partners, which uh, which we didn't mention, and that's really what it comes down to is like that they they, they have a gun sleeve that is super compactable, and um, it can slide in my Super Cub or it can slide in the 185, uh, really easy. But I always carry when I'm on the mountain, um, I carry the uh, scope cover, and it's just such a great tool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it, when I, when I talk about some, a tool that needs to be multifunctional, it's the number one tool in my bag because, um, I can use it. Obviously it protects my, my rifle and my optics. Um, you know, I've fallen down, uh, went down a rock slide and, uh, with your gun and with the air armor tech scope cover on it. And I, I shouldn't be here right now, but my gun should also shouldn't have come out unscathed. Right. Uh, it was one of those situations and that was directly because like I fell right on my, on my back where I carry, where I carry my rifle. Um, and that, uh, air armor tech protection was amazing. So I, but you know, the, uh, the multifunction part is that if your thermo rest goes down, you know, we tied a conversation right. about Aaron sleeping on the ground during a sheep hunt. Right. Uh, you know, he slept on the ground for 10 days. I heard today with, cause his thermo rest went down or sleeping pad. I don't know what it was, right. but, um, that's where I've had that happen. You know, the air armor tech scope cover then just becomes, you know, a hip. I sleep right. on my side. So I put it underneath my hips and it, you know, it's, it can save your hunt. It can save a lot of misery. Yeah. Right. So. But then really when it's, sh when it's time to shoot, I've used it as a, as a bag, um, you know, over top of rocks to resting on the rocks. Uh, I also use it to fill the void. Mm -hmm. You know, I can use it on my, on my butt, the butt of the gun to, you know, elevate it. So it's just, it's such a great tool and, uh, and you know, their, the product is, has saved, has saved a lot. I think that everybody should run one. Yeah, and for people that haven't seen it, it's basically like it's an inflatable. Well, how would you describe? It's it? almost like an inflatable bag. Like, like it yeah. just it it looks ugly. It uh, it does. Like I think that it's not it's not pretty, but it's I don't really care about pretty. It's about function. Sure. And and if you've got a in this situation, you have a fifty thousand dollar hunt, or if you're going on a stone sheep hunt that you paid eighty five thousand dollars for, and you slip on the rocks. And all of a sudden, onto now your you're scope. onto your scope and now you've lost not, and maybe you may not even know if your scope is off, right. but you've lost confidence in that. And you know, the, the little chinks in the armor are what bring, are what bring it all crashing down. And that's one of those things. If you've got, like, I can literally just take my backpack off and almost, you know, throw it on the ground, rest it on the ground. And I know that my gun is fine. And, you know, lots of times when you get tired and, you know, those kind of things happen. Right. And so just peace of mind for anybody that's going out, you know, on a, on a hunt on a backpack hunt, that's uh, it's a no brainer for me. Right. Now, so today we just did some long range, um, mountain hunting practice, right? Day one of that. And, uh, you were a total star. No, that was so <laughs> much fun. Uh -huh. Like. I don't get to, I don't get to shoot enough, um, at home, you know, life and, and I'm not that different from, you know, most people life is, life is busy and, you know, I just don't get to shoot enough or I don't take the time to shoot enough. Uh, but this, you know, out there with you guys today and shooting in like real life scenarios, like mountain scenarios, and we're going to get into more of it tomorrow. Yeah. We'll turn the wind up too for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it was, that was it, the day one. It was pretty <laughs> cruisy. I got, I got, I got to be honest. I got, I got some, we held the rain till you were done. Yeah. We kept the wind down. Yeah. Tomorrow you'll get wind and rain. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's great because that'll be more real life conditions. Right. Absolutely. And that's the great thing about this course. Um, like I took the, uh, the LRU, the first one and I just learned so much, but that was three years ago. Yes. 
so, you know, to have you guys run me through, you know, the things that, you know, the, the foundations again is so important. And I just, I can't say enough good things about that. Like I, like you and I have maybe talked about it before, but the LRU and what, what the instruction, um, what it provides is just so much peace of mind. Again, it's like the Air Armor Tech case when you're out there. Yeah. Only you have the skill. You are the tool, right? And when you put all those things, you know, all those factors in your favor that you guys teach, it's like it makes life so much, so much easier. And the confidence that you have going into the field is like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It, it's just like the working out thing. Like you're creating your own luck by increasing your odds and everything that you do. Yeah. 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 No, it's, I, I, and I was never, um, I was never a proponent of long range shooting because I wasn't educated enough. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like somebody saying like, oh, you know, you can only shoot a bow 40 yards because that's the only ethical range. Well, you can shoot a bow 70 yards if you know all of the, you know, if you shoot all the time and you know what you shoot in conditions, you shoot in wind, you shoot in all of these things. If you educate yourself and you dedicate yourself to it, then you can ethically shoot and you can ethically shoot out those six, 700 yards. If you, you know, you do the, do the work and you train and you put, and you learn from somebody who can, you know, who knows and the theory and the, um, the instruction that Jeremy gave is, is like Jeremy today was, he's so easy yeah. to, and the way he explains it and the, you know, he's the, the atmosphere in which you guys are teaching really creates uh, success for, and it was on well, my first course, that was the key to it. And I took, um, you know, I've been hunting with that off of that course for three years now with a level of, you know, of confidence that I never had before. And now to come back here and be able to shoot, you know, at angles, which is going to be tomorrow is going to be so much so fun. Steep angles. Yeah, yeah. Steep angles, which is what I do all the time, um, in the mountains. And now to, you know, to be tr able to train with you guys and, and, you know, Jeremy and yourselves, well, you guys will be able to tell me if I'm doing it wrong or how, you know, what, to what to tweak to, you know, maximize your, your killing, you know, you're killing distance. And you shoot with a tripod, you hunt with a tripod. Yeah. But you learned a new technique today. You, you just a, a couple new techniques. Yeah. That was really cool because I've never, um, so what I, the biggest thing that take away from me today was learning to shoot from my knees. Um, I've shot from seated before because often, you know, you're on this, you're on the mountain and, you know, you need to either, you know, be shooting, sometimes they're shooting up and, you know, you need to clear some, some brush and, or shooting down or whatever the scenario is. And lots of times I've been, I've had to shoot, uh, from a seated position and I learning to shoot from my knees and the ability to use my backpack. A great scenario is this, this year, um, I took a bison here in March and I shot, uh, seated and had I, had I known what I know now, right. Is I would have shot from my knees um, and I would have been able to do it sitting on my backpack cause I was sitting in the snow, mm -hmm. you know, and you're waiting for that bison to stand up or to move out from, in this case, it was, it had brush in front of it and it needed to move out. And sometimes, you know, I've been, you know, waiting hours for a bison to stand up two years ago. I waited two hours for it to stand up and you're sitting in the snow and, you know, I had to leave to go get, cause I dropped my backpack a little bit, you know, 20 yards away and I had to leave my seated position where I was on it, um, to get my pack cause I was freezing. Yeah. So this, this, uh, this kneeling position, use, utilizing your pack as a seat. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. And, and then now the sling thing is I've never hunted with a sling before because it was just added weight. Right. Right. But now, uh, Jeremy taught, taught me to use the sling and the, and the unique thing to hooking it on your the belt, tether, yeah. um, tightening it up. And the stability of that is, uh, it's crazy. It really is. Isn't it? Like, yeah, it was it, like, you know, shooting, 
shooting out, I don't know, 400 yards, 400 and whatever some yards that was. And it was just solid. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that one and uh, taking that new technique into the field this year. And so the winner's going to get the same rifle that you're carrying. Yeah. Is it a, um, is it a seven PRC this year? Or uh, it it's be a draw? climber. We put a build in for a six, five PRC because there's very little time between when the drawing is for the winter and when the hunt is. Right. So we don't have time to do something custom necessarily. Yeah. Um, so the plan is a six, five PRC climber, very similar to what you're using really. Nice. Mm. I think it's so perfect. Yeah. It can be a great sheep gun. Yeah. 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 They're going to be psyched to have that gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Uh, thinking back to this uh, sheep mountain training, imagine all the people who draw a sheep tag for the first time that live somewhere where they've never shot in the mountains and so on. Like how in the world, other than going on the hunt, do they ever have the opportunity to realize, you know, thermals and updrafts and angles and yeah. all of that. So I think this is a tremendous opportunity, especially for people that have never done it before to come out and train. Yeah, it's, I can't, like I said, I'm not, uh, it was a game changer for me. And I never, I never knew. Right. And you, but if you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I, like, I don't do anything. Like there's, there is zero that's not authentic about what I do in the mountains. And you know, the, like I said, it took me five years to find a boot Yeah. because I was not going to, I was not going to just start promote a boot that I didn't know was the best that I had found right. and that worked for me. So when, when I say, if you shoot in the mountains at all, you should take this course. It will change your, it will change your hunting life. Yeah. The idea yeah. with what sheep hunts cost, if someone hasn't done this before, yeah, my goodness, I mean, really what an insurance policy, what, what a way to make the whole hunt more fun. But it's not even sheep, you know, like elk here in Colorado or, you know, whatever, whenever you're in that mountain environment. I think that the ability to be able to to reach out beyond um, what you're comfortable with right now is worth it. Yes. And if your comfort zone right now is 250 yards and it can get you out to 400, if your comfort zone is 400 and it can get you out to 600, you may never take that 600 yard shot. Like I do, I take very few 600 yard shots, like very few, because I know that the because the ability of the camera is the sweet spot is 400 yards. Right. But I know, but there have been times that I can't get to 400 yards. Like two guys in, or three guys in the situation that it is right now, it doesn't, it do, it's not conducive to, you know, getting to 400. So maybe it's 550, maybe it's 600. And the cameras have the ability to do that. Um, is it the sweet spot? Not necessarily, but, you know, you're five, six, 12 days into a hunt and this is there's your legal ramp like 12 days into a hunt and we that you know the three of us there was a hunt about i don't know maybe five years ago now we were literally 12 days in it rained almost the whole time you know low cloud it was a grind and that shot that presented itself was beyond 400 yards and it was like this is done yeah and that's what, that, like, that's what it is. You know, it's already done. All right. Well, we've been walking through this whole trip. Now we've got the rifle in our hands. We're ready to make a shot. It's going to be successful. Now you go. The next level of work to do. How do you take care of the game after you have had a successful shot? Yeah. Well, that's, um, you know, you get to, you get to work, right? <laughs> yeah. You get to carving these, carving these critters up and it's, uh, it's on your back and, you know, that's where, I guess that's where the knife comes in. That's where Hogue comes in. Right. Right. And what made you pick them? I mean, you tested the boots, you've tested the rifle, you've tested the clothes. Why Hogue knives? Um, the, why Hogue knives is because Hogue knives have been, they're an American company. They have been around for 53 years and they've been building, they've been building knives here for 53 years. They're not exporting or, tra you know, getting stuff you know, from other countries, they're not getting stuff made over here. Um, so that was, you know, that's not the most important factor, but it certainly is a factor. Mm -hmm. You know, when we can, um, you know, I'm not American, but when we can support, you know, our our brother, like yeah. you are a guy, like 
you are like our brothers, <laughs> you know, you're our neighbors to neighbors to the South. And when, and we rely on each other so much. And I, you know, we being in the Yukon, we have a huge connection to Alaska. It's like the, uh, like they are like Canadians almost. That's how we yeah. look at them. Cause you're just, you're kind of locked from you guys or right. landlocked. And, um, but we are all one in a lot of ways where we rely on each other a lot. And that, uh, I think that that, you know, a company like that, that has been around and has supported, supported the, you know, your nation, that's, that's one factor, but it's about people. Yes. For me, for me, it's about people. Yeah. It's about relationships and the kind of people that, um, that Hogue are, I, you know, I knew Jim who is, uh, Jim Bruin, who is the president and, uh, he's the CEO, maybe CFO, um, just a great guy. Yeah. And, and then when he said, when he said to me, Greg, um, we want you to test, you know, test the knife out. And I was like, yeah, I'll go test the knife out. That's, that's fine. And that's, that's one of those things that like, if this fails, so like it's an, it's a non-starter. Right. Right. So if, um, but his attitude was, um, if this fails, tell me how to make it better. We will make it better. We will do everything that there is. To, we, we will do a hundred versions of, of this knife to give to the hunting community the best product, the best American-made product that is out there. Right. And that's an attitude that you don't find not in manufacturing. Definitely not necessarily, enough. Right? We have it here. Yes. Hogue has that attitude I I can tell you about a boot company that that I tested the boots catastrophic failure and that was not their attitude, and that was the last time we communicated. Oh boy! So, uh, but that's the point. The sure. point is the gym. His attitude is, we can build the best knife. We can build it in the U.S. Let's, you know, tell us how to make it better, and. And they did, and they've got, you know, they came up with a really uh, ingenious scalpel blade, which is great for, you know, sheep. And um, they've got a lightweight package and they're just entering the hunting market, which, you know, they've been into the folding knives and military and they make, uh, they make a lot of products, but they want to really give, um, you know, they understand that the American I don't want to say conservative minded person is that, you know, is that outdoors person. Yes. And they've been supporting the, this country militarily by, you know, providing knives for, you know, for shooters and, right. you know, providing and, you know, the whole shooting world, um, they make grips and really that, that hunting and that gun, um, gun shooter. And now they understand that that person also is the hunter. Yes. You know, we, we are, us as hunters are, you know, multifaceted, especially you guys in the U S with your ability to, you know, have access to different firearms that we don't get to in Canada, which is a whole new, another conversation. That's another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, it's, um, yeah, great people. And they make, they're made, they've made a great product and they want to get better and they want to serve the public and serve the people. Nice. Right. That, what more do you ask for? Well, before we wrap up and tell the listeners how they can enter this contest, Neil, do you have anything you'd like to add or ask? I'm just still thinking through some of the after, you know, the shot care and so on. Uh, it could be different Northwest Territories versus Yukon or even within certain game units, if you will. But like uh, moose, sheep, do you have to bone it out? Or uh, are there rules where you have to take it out in quarters? Uh, how do you deal with all of that? Yeah. So up our way, it's, it's basically all the meat has to come out. Yep. It doesn't matter whether it's on the bone, uh, or not. So, you know, often in sheep, when you know, were packing it back miles, we're, we're boning it out. But in the moose situation, you know, you can, depending on how you're, how you're transporting it, generally speaking, for the most part, you're not, you know, killing moose in the mountains and packing it. Right. You know, five miles generally. But for trophy care, so this, this is going to be somebody's trophy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of arrangements are there for that in terms of how they handle that? Well, I mean, all depending on what they want, whether it's a shoulder mount or it's a uh, life size 
if it's a life size, we'll just we'll dorsal it and we'll yeah you know we'll we'll make we'll we will provide them with that you know whatever they want. It's it's coming off the mountain right so that they can take that trophy whether if they can you know if they can afford to life size mount it they'll be able to do so. If um you know if they want a shoulder mount then do that that's what they'll have. All right. Well, uh, Greg, thanks a ton. It's great having you out here. Looking forward to the next two days of shooting. For those of you that want to enter this contest, you just go to gunworks.com and there's an opt-in form right on the front page and put in your name and we're rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what the other the other way is a sheephuntgiveaway.com. Okay, sorry. And also sheephuntgiveaway.com. Either yeah. one works. But They all I, go to the same place. Yeah, if you've got it on the, on your homepage, then... Uh, then Go to Gunworks. There you go. All right. Do Gunworks employees uh, qualify? Yeah, family. It's like with a radio station thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Employees and family members are not. A... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how it would go over. No, I. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it's well, going to be. Uh, it's going to be a fabulous time, and whoever wins, it's going to be one lucky, lucky fella or, or lady. That's for sure. Great, Greg. Thanks a ton. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yep. If you like what you're hearing here, please take a second and give us a five-star rating and a positive review on iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. We appreciate your feedback and suggestions for topics you'd like discussed or questions you want answered on the podcast. You can reach out on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email to podcast at gunworks.com. Also, be sure and check out our full offering of long-range gear at gunworks.com. Use promo code LRP for free shipping on any order.